Hello, it is Thursday, October 12th, 2023. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It's a Thursday crossword today and a debut construction by John Nagamichi Cho, who has uh, <laughs> found out some interesting things about this person just now when I was looking them up. And uh, I'll share that with you in a moment. But this is a Thursday crossword, so it will have some kind of interesting or intricate theme. And this interesting or intricate edition of The Daily Solve has been brought to us by Henrik Koskinen, David Innes, Josh Lucas, and as always, the invaluable, sorry, the indomitable showmaster, I should say, and the incredible Horan family. As thank you so much to the five of them, benefactors of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign. They are supporting this channel. I really do appreciate it. Thanks to them. Thank you to everybody who's a patron of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign. And if you'd like to become one of those and support this series, you can head over to patreon.com slash daily solve or click the link in the description field. There you can find the bonus avail uh, videos available to patrons and the uh, official mug for benefactors. So thank you again to all of those supporters. And uh, thanks if you've subscribed to the channel. That's a big help as well. And uh, please consider doing so. And then there's also the Daily Solve Discord chat server that you can join. Um, there's a nice friendly chat community and there's a link in the description field underneath the video to that as well. All right, so let's get on to the puzzle. This is, as I said, a debut construction by our constructor, John Nagamichi Cho. And the reason that, uh, that I wanted to share a few details about this person, I often, especially with debut constructors, I often look them up online just out of curiosity to see what they're what their history is. I usually don't say anything about it on the channel. I'm just sort of interested to know. And in this case, uh, so this person is, I think, principally a, a professor at MIT, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, and seems to have a, a, a meteorology focus, as far as I can tell. But one of the things that came up was a New York Times article from 1998, uh, and I, I think the, the thing that was notable about a book that was published by John Nagamichi Cho was that it prompted a new uh, subject heading in the Library of Congress. The Library of Congress um, you know, has a copy of every, every book that, that's published in the United States, I believe. And uh, this book required a new heading, Canned Meat Poetry, uh, under which this... <laughs> The book released by our constructor today was, at least at the time, the sole entry. Uh, the book was entitled Spam Coup Tranquil Reflections on Luncheon Loaf and contains 162 examples of spam-related haiku drawn from uh, Mr. Cho's website that he launched in 1995 uh, called the Spam Haiku Archive, containing his own poetry as well as poetry submitted by other people. Uh, visitors. So just a bizarre, fascinating fact that I thought I would share with you um, from my, my brief online research into today's constructor. Anyway, here we are. Um, uh, well, that was 1998. So here we are decades later um, playing a crossword constructed by this same fellow. And I don't assume it will have any spam references in it, but who knows, maybe it will. It'll have some kind of theme uh, and we'll have to find out what it is. So in any case, this, this is a debut construction by John Negamichi Cho, edited as always by Will Shorts. It is a Thursday crossword, so it will have some kind of interesting or intricate theme. And let's start solving and see how we do with it. I'm curious to know what this person has in store. I mean, obviously someone with a sort of tongue in cheek sense of humor. Uh, she be stingin athlete. I don't know what that is. I have no idea what that's referencing. Answer to the riddle, I have one bow, but no arrows. What am I? I don't know, a viola or something? I don't, I don't think it's that. It could, be, it could be a ship, I guess, one bow. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I yeah, feel as though there are a few possibilities there. HS course for college credit, or collega credit, maybe, if this is... Kollege Kredit, if this is German. Oh, right. Okay. So um, AP German, maybe advanced placement German, because you can get college credit for taking an advanced placement course in high school and then receiving a sufficiently high mark on the resultant advanced placement test. So I think that would be probably what this is. I mean, this, this reads like German to me. So let's look at the down, see if that helps. Put down. 
lay down, as in you lay something down on a table, you put it down. The down in parentheses means we'll apply it both to this clue, but also to the answer. So put down, lay down. Mimic, to mimic somebody is to imitate them, to ape them. Tennis champion Swiatek, oh, I don't know, unsurprisingly. Gaston, who wrote The Phantom of the Opera. Oh, I'll, I'll recognize it when I see it, but I don't, I don't know. I can't remember offhand. That's annoying. Restaurant chain named after its founders, the Raffle Brothers. I do know this. I do know this. It's Arby's. Um, because I think it's RB for Raffle Brothers. I think. I'm fairly certain that's correct. Uh, yeah, I think that's what it is. It's a phonetic spelling of, it's a phonetic, phonetic representation of RB for Raffle Brothers. Famous cookie guy. So there's a brand of packaged cookies called Famous Amos. And so that would be who this is. I don't know if there was such a person in reality. Uh, Mekong Valley language would be Lao. Um, straightforwardly enough. Key part of a cephalopod's defense mechanism. An ink sac, so a cephalopod, like a squid, might you know, shoot ink at an enemy to sort of surprise and disorient it. Oh, Layla Ali? Right, okay, so she be stinging. Is this a kind of, is this a reference to float like a butterfly, sting like a bee, uh, you know, famously associated with Muhammad Ali, and then here his his daughter, there must be, I, I don't know what this is specifically referencing, but I assume it is in some way related to that concept. Um, let's just look at the downs here. All oh, right, Iga maybe? Oh, this looks like a yearbook. Scholar's Mug Collection. Right, okay, so scholar, uh, in this case, a high school student, presumably, and then a mug collection, referring to a collection of photographs of faces, mug shots, essentially. So a mug being a you know term for the face. So uh, that's what's going on here. A yearbook would contain photographs of, of all of the students in uh, a given year of high school. Okay, Gaston, who wrote Phantom of the Oz at LaRue. I, can't, I honestly can't remember. Let's see. What about this? Groans equivalent to eye rolls. Oy? Oy. That's, oof, that was, might, might be. Grade just above average, a C plus. I think if a C is average, then a C plus would be just above. It does look like LaRue, doesn't it? Um, X and Y. X and Y. Not sure what that is. Dosed oneself. If one dosed oneself, one... Um, I'm not sure, sorry. Sort of doped or something? I don't know. Like the clean cleanup crew at closing time, typically. Late shifters or something? Late... What a cryptid might be. Right, okay, so this does work with LaRue. Okay, so I think we can... We can put oops. We can put that in. So a, a cryptid it refers to a sort of theorized or alleged creature, like Bigfoot or the Yeti or something, of which there there isn't actually any sort of received scientific proof or evidence. Um, and it could well be. It could it could be a sort of dis, you know diffuse urban legend, but it could also be an intentional hoax. Okay, X and Y. Yeah, still don't. Oh. Kai, but I don't see what that would how that how that would apply to X and Y. I don't, yeah, I don't really know. Sorry, dosed oneself. Pot. I, yeah, I don't know what's going on there. This might be related to the theme. I don't know. Like the cleanup crew. I want this to be late something spinning speed abbreviation. Oh, maybe not. Maybe it's RPM revolutions per minute. Spinning speed. It does feel what that would be. I, I don't know. I still want, oh, like the cleanup last to leave. Is there any way that's the answer? This couldn't be RPM if that were true. I guess it could be RPS, revolutions per second. I don't, I'm less familiar with that as... A measurement. I mean, there's no reason it wouldn't, it would be any less plausible. I just, 
You just don't hear it as often, I don't think. Um, let's look at the crosses. I'm, this is a bit of a, of a stab in the dark, so let's see. Choose. Uh, one favoring imitation over innovation. A follower, a... Lamar, who played for the 59 across. I mean, I know the name Lamar Odom, so... And and as a as a basketball player, so I f couldn't tell you anything about them, but I I think that's right. Oh, and then here that's being referenced, NBA team with a 1980s Showtime era. Is that the LA Lakers? I'm only guessing that because I think there's a show that dramatizes this. I hope that's right. I'm not very confident. So let's look at the crosses. Mobile. Oh right, mobile. This looks like mobile home, but what I think it's actually referencing is Mobile, Alabama. So ALA maybe? The US states have various abbreviations ranging from two to four letters, sometimes three letters. So uh, this maybe this is ALA looks like plausibly one of them. Morning glory goddess. So Eos, the, the goddess of the dawn, rosy fingered dawn. Uh, campus in Troy, New York. Is it Rens Renslauer Polytechnic Institute? There are a few universities with kind of similar acronyms and vaguely similar names to one another in Northeast United States. I never quite remember where they all are, but but this is one of them. And I'm just guessing it because it's three letters and starts with R. I think that's, I think that's right. Or at least plausible. Oh, right. 27 or 55 down backward or 55 down. That's interesting. Does that mean 27 and 55 are going to be the same? Surely not. This must mean something that I don't quite understand just yet. Oh, and that's just a dash. Right. Okay. So this will be thematic. And then so will this. Oh, no, this one isn't. A ninny. An ass, maybe? Well, LA Lakers looks reasonable. So let's let's go back to where we actually were. Oh, and this is a dash as well. And so is this. Okay. So th that'll be related to the theme. Maybe that's why I can't answer these. Right. So often what happens when you have a dash is it, it could mean if it could mean a few things, but it usually means in some way this is related to the theme. Therefore, it doesn't need to be clued because the clue is being provided in some other means. That's explained by the way the theme works. Now, often, even more specifically than that, what it means is uh, it, it simply continues on from a previous clue as though the black bar weren't there, or sometimes as though there were a letter placed in that black cell. Now, uh, that may well be the case here. I'm still not sure what the answer to X and Y is, but it could be does this one have a dash as well? This one has a dash as well. So this, this actually could be a fairly long word. This could be CH blank, and then this black cell may or may not be another letter. Then we continue on here, another possible letter here, and then we continue all the way down here. Same with 22 across. Yeah. So dosed oneself. Uh, popped pills? That would work with RPS. Let's just put it in and see. So if we imagine there were a P in this black cell, then we could continue on and write PI and then LLS. So does that let us answer any more clues? Good field for a smooth talker. Don't have any great ideas offhand there. One favoring imitation over innovation. MX-5 Roadsters, e.g. Those are MX-5. I think that's a Mazda. Could be wrong about that. It's probably not because it doesn't look very good here. Or Popped Pills is, is wrong. Baby Eels. Oh, Elvers? I'm fairly sure an Elver is a Baby Eel. So maybe this is maybe this is working out. Let's, oh, no, this is just that dash. Uh, Ninny. Okay, so Ninny could be an ass. MX-5 Roadsters. I think that's a Mazda Miata. But it could be, there could be some category of car that that fits into here. Unrestricted Audition. Um, 
open something, a something call, unrestricted audition. I don't, I don't know. Leaves damaged. It could be referring to leaves of a tree in some kind of punny way. Leaves damaged. If it's a, it probably ends with an S either way, actually, whether it's a verb or a noun. Navigates a slippery slope in a way. I'm not quite seeing it. Unrestricted audition. Oh, sorry. I just noticed this. Donna, actually, I've noticed a few I can just put in. Uh, <laughs> as I've often said, when I solve these on videos, I'd solve them so differently to how I solve them alone. When I'm solving these on my own, I would just be anything I would see in the clues. I would just jump straight to that and immediately put it in. And I would end up solving the crossword more quickly. I don't really do that here because it just feels like I should be solving them in the order I see them to keep things slightly less chaotic. But since I'm slightly stuck, I'm just going to put in things that I can immediately see and put in. So Donna Tart is a novelist, uh, author of The Goldfinch and The Secret History, uh, for instance. Here's brief British PM Liz Truss, was a was a uh, conservative British prime minister who lasted an extraordinary 48 days, I believe, in office. Um, yeah, un un unbelievable, historically short um, term of office. It was really an extraordinary period, those few weeks when that was happening over here. Uh, candy dispensed with a nod of the head is Pez, uh, famously dispensed from those little sort of plastic uh, dispensers that look uh, with heads that look like particular characters. Uh, vim, so vim and vigor refers to kind of pep or you know spirit. So we can put that there. Interstice, so I'm kind of just chaining off of this in a little stair step pattern here, but interstice, I would think to be a gap in the sense of interstitial being an adjective referring to a gap or a lapse. Um, and there are staircase ends because here we have a larger cross. Gentleman of Verona in England. Is this referring to Shakespeare? I'm not quite sure what we're being asked to, to do here. Yeah, I'm not quite sure what the clue is asking for. Let's see, has, has any of this given me anything? Uh, just blank with it. Just roll with it, maybe? Roll with the punches. Floored. Um, probably ends with D. Begat. Sired, as in begat a child, sired a child. Convertible. Um... Not quite sure. Let's see. Gentleman of Verona. Yeah, still not quite sure what, what that's asking for. One's doing some heavy lifting before retirement. Some heavy lifting before retirement. Is something to do with with sort of weight lifting or something? Or construction? Before retirement. Not quite sure what that what we're looking for there. Retail apparel giant. I mean, there are probably quite a few possibilities here. Pans that sound like strolls. What on earth that sound like strolls? What, what does it mean to sound like a stroll? Probably ends with an S, though. Sugar apple by another name. Blank Schwartz. Okay, well, here's a famous toy store in New York City, FAO Schwartz. Um, I think, I think, um, I mean, I think it's been a number of films. I think maybe, uh, Home Alone 2 and maybe that Tom Hanks movie Big might, that might've been an F.A.O. Schwartz. I can't, can't remember. It is a very famous New York toy store. Uh, so pans could be walks. It's a type of pan that you might, you know, cookware. Seems like it might fit. Let's just put it in and see if it helps. Sugar apple by another name. I do not, I just don't, I just don't know that. Modern love. Modern love. A bay, maybe? If you refer to your love as, an, as, as a person, maybe? And I'm just, I'm trying to think of something that would be specifically modern. So bay, bay being a fairly modern term of endearment to describe someone you love. Let's see. New York County that's home to Binghamton. I don't, I don't know that. Run to. 
add up to. That does not enough letters. Um, sugar apple by another name. Sweetie? Is that another term of endearment? I don't think so. And that would be spelled I-E, not Y at the end anyway. Answer to the... Oh, right. Okay, I don't know what that is. Captcha test affirmative. Does this have dashes? It does. Okay. So something like I am not a robot or something, or I am a robot. I, I am an O-T-A... Or, oh, no, no, I'm not a robot doesn't fit. I don't like putting not in an affirmative anyway. But usually that's what we're being asked to affirm when we complete a CAPTCHA test online is I'm not a robot. Could be, I actually, I guess it could be I'm not a robot. Let's just see. I'm an, I mean, it'll fit obviously letter-wise, but let's see if we can get any of the um, crosses to work out. Succession error. Oh, that's, that was an HBO program, a great, great show. Um, is it me or is it hot in here? There we go. Oh, and here's, here's the end of another thematic, uh, answer. So document that may contain a microchip number and a veterinarian's signature, a pet passport, I suppose, or a dog passport or a cat passport, I guess. I don't really know how to distinguish between those without any crosses, but passport seems very likely because passports tend to have biometric information on a microchip. So P E T P A S S P O R T. Um, I'm as ready as I'll ever be. That looks reasonably likely. Angle symbol in trigonometry theta. Oh, is it theta or delta? I think it's theta. Delta is what change in mathematics. Let's look at this. Fifteenth century headgear for a knight. Not sure offhand. For a knight. I don't know. Some kind of helmet, I presume. Common aloe descriptor. <laughs> the official medicinal plant of the New York Times crossword. That's my common descriptor for aloe. But it's obviously not what we're looking for here. Sorority chaperone. Some sort of mother. House mother? So of a sorority house in a, in a university? On a university campus, maybe? Oh, this looks like seniors. Why is that in England? I mean, it isn't being... Sp what, you know, what is going on with this clue? I'm sure it makes perfect sense. I'm just not quite... Not quite getting it. I'm sorry about that. Convertible... A raft? No, that doesn't really fit the down anyway. Common aloe descriptor. Something... Uh, something's not right. Yeah, I'm not... Something I'm not seeing. Okay. Oh, maybe this is a, sh a ship. Answer to the riddle. I have one bow, but no arrows. What am I? A ship. I'm not usually crazy about putting an article in here, a ship, but I think I'm sort of okay with it here because it's specifically saying the answer to the riddle. And often when you answer this kind of riddle, you would say a ship. You wouldn't just say the word ship. That would be a bit odd and awkward. So because it's being phrased specifically as an answer to this riddle, I'm okay with there being this indefinite article of A before ship. Okay, common allo descriptor document. Oh, right, right. So this is pet passport because we have a P there now. Run to, okay, yeah, okay. I was basically on the right track. So something runs to this, it amounts to this. So I said add up to, same idea. But yeah, the bill runs to, the bill amounts to. Common aloe descriptor, soothing. Oh, right, okay, yes. Aloe is often described as soothing. So this looks wrong. Oh, it's ragtop. No, it is correct. Because our, oh, right, okay. So our, our sort of secret letters in these black cells, they don't just apply to the downs. They apply to the acrosses as well. And sometimes that's how it goes. Sometimes it isn't. And in this case, that is how it goes. So we have, I'm not a robot, down, pet passport down, across ragtop, and then here, oh, it's also OP. It's the, it's the same two letters. So a sugar apple is a sweet sop, I suppose. I don't know that, that bit of vocabulary, but it, it must be right, surely. So an, an armit, 15th century headgear for a knight. I mean, I don't know this off, you know, off the top of my head, but it sounds like a plausible name for a knight's headgear to me. Um, 
it's tough because it's crossing a New York County that I don't know, but Broome sounds like a plausible name for a place. So, uh, in fact, I think I've encountered other places named Broome, but I don't know this New York County, but there we go. I think that's right. It might be a lot. This looks like, no, it's not market. Pre-Euro currency of Finland. Ooh. I wanted to involve Mark in general because that's such a common element of currency names, but not, oh yeah, it, it may because it's called in here in brackets. The brackets often indicates a kind of uh, sort of exclamation, but something that's non-verbal. It's not words. It's just sort of a sound you might make. So burr, for instance. Um, I don't know what the rest of this word is though. It might be a lot, a tract of land, a lot of land. Panama, Panama's Gulf of San... Ooh, I don't actually know this offhand. That's annoying. Covert mission... All oh, right, here we go. Covert missions, or what's covert in eight of this puzzle's answers. Very good. They are black ops. And of course, we have ops, OPs, in several pairs of black cells in this puzzle. I suppose in uh, in four pairs. Well, no, not well, yes, in, in four pairs of cells. So one, two, three, and four. And uh, that relates to eight of the answers in the grid. Uh, four downs and four acrosses. So anyway, over here, are, now that we, oops, not over here, over here, we know that we these are now all OPs. So choose is to opt for something. There we go. That That's why that didn't make sense. And similarly down here, yes, okay, an unrestricted audition is an open call. So once again, that's why this, this didn't make sense to me and I couldn't think of what it was, even though I wanted it to have open in it. And it does. So here we have CHO, so X and Y. Um, probably, well, it's going to say ends with an S, but that doesn't look very good over here, does it? Navigates a slippery slope in a way. Good field for a smooth talker. Yeah, I'm not sure about that. One favoring imitation over innovation. Is I mean, popped pills could be wrong. Oh, no, it's not popped pills. It definitely isn't now because the OP rules that out. That isn't what this is. Oh, I, I shouldn't have been, I shouldn't have left that in there for so long. It was, it was very, you know, speculative. Dosed oneself. So this is a P. I mean, popped looks all right. And I did like RPS for here, revolutions per second. So P-O-P-P, -P, probably still E-D, probably still popped. Dosed oneself, popped. A pill? Yeah, exact same idea as what I had, but just phrased a little bit differently. So popped a pill. Navigates a slippery slope in a way, could be sleds down, down a snowy hill, for instance. Um, what about here? Good field for a smooth talker. Ooh, I'm just not sure offhand. MX, oh, MX5 Roadsters, they are Miatas. Mazda Miatas. There we go. It was that, that model of car. All right, leaves damaged. You scar something or someone, you leave them damaged. There we go. Fomented? Yes. Spurred is fomented. So if you, if you fomented action or revolution or something, you spurred it to happen. Good field for a smooth talker sales. I get, oh, right. Okay. Your salesperson, a smooth talker. I, I thought there was going to be something punny here, but it was actually straightforward. So what is, what is this? X and Y. C-H-R-O. Oh, chromosomes. Right. Of course. Okay. Yeah. Just didn't think of that. It's referring to, to human chromosomes. There we go. Okay. One favoring imitation over, I guess, mammalian. Um, one favoring imitation over innovation, a me tour. Wow, that's not a phrase I've ever encountered. Me, me tour. I think that's probably the answer, but it's a new word to me. I mean, obviously, I'm familiar with the concept of me too as a general idea of you know imi indicating imitation, but I've never heard it as a noun in this way. Low in the pasture. So here we have low, and obviously you read this and it looks and reads like it's an adjective, you're low down, but in fact, it's a, it's a, it's a verb, a, a cow lowing, you know, or mooing in this case. So moo, making that sound. 1974 John Wayne movie. I don't, I don't know a fan. Maybe I'll recognize it. I'm not sure. 
Doc to consult when confused. Right. So again, you read this and this looks like a doctor, but in this case, it's not. I think it's referring to a document and it's it's being abbreviated from document down to doc. And therefore, the answer will also be abbreviated in this case from frequently asked questions to FAQ, a document that might provide answers to your uh, to the issues on which you're confused about which you're confused. So one's doing some heavy lifting before retirement. So Jack says, and you might lift a car with a jack in order to replace its tire, perhaps, and then and then retire it, remove remove the jack once its lifting has been done. Well, and, and hopefully once the car's been lowered again. Retail apparel giant, oh, J. Crew. This is a U.S. Uh, clothing retailer, J. Crew. Uh, John. Oh, John Wayne movie, McHugh. Okay, I think, I, I mean, I think I've never seen this, but I, I, I've i seen it sort of referenced or I've probably seen the movie poster, but I don't, couldn't tell you much about it. Presumably it's a, it's a Western. Floored, if you floored somebody, you wowed them. There we go. That's what that is. And then words repeated in the title of a Doris Day hit. Uh, is this Que Sera, whatever will be, will be, or is this a different song? I don't know. In any case, will be, must be the answer. And then... Uh, case Sarah, Sarah, I should have said. Uh, China and environs uh, East Asia. There we go. Simple enough. Panama's Gulf of Gulf of San Gulf of San Blas. Okay. Well, I don't. I don't know. I, I don't know that actually geographically. Sorry about that. But East Asia looks like the answer here. So Marca pre-euro currency of Finland. That looks. Yeah. Those two Ks. That looks very Finnish to me. So there we go. Uh, and then. Oh right, we did have to to. Uh, ask answers in the grid. That's very good because I was wondering how could you have two of the same answer in a crossword grid? I mean, unless that's sort of the theme of the puzzle, that wouldn't happen. And indeed, it hasn't really happened here uh, because even though there are two spaces that appear to have the same word, one of them is actually that word, but one of them isn't. It's only part of the full answer, uh, which is uh, oh right, pet, pet passports, and it's it's very self. I was no right. I was yeah okay. So yes, pet passports, and this is just a component of that. I was going to say this is also a part of it, but it isn't. Sorry, this is just SSA, uh, which could have been. You could have clued that with something referring to the Social Security Administration, but I think this is much more clever, and um, because when I first saw it, I found it very confusing. Um, because of what it would imply, what it would have implied about the crossword grid. Um, but it makes much more sense in the context of the theme. Anyway, we'll fill in this and it should be the correct answer. So there we go. Oh, right. And um, as is often the case these days, we now have the grid adjusted to contain our thematic element, the black ops, our OP pairs uh, situated in these pairs of black cells. And there we go. Very nice debut construction by John Nagamichi Cho. Well done to him. No spam references. So we uh, we did not have any of any of um, any canned meat related thematic content in this grid. Uh, so there we go. We had eight thematic answers. We had chromosomes, uh, popped a pill, opt for, open call, ragtop, sweet sop, which was a new word for me. Um, I'm not a robot and pet passport, all relying on these, uh, sort of redacted OP cells, uh, which is, which is very appropriate actually, because black ops, you think of, you think of black ops as being very secretive. There's, you know, probably lots of, lots of redacted documents surrounding their details. If anything comes to light publicly, uh, and that's what we've done here is we've redacted these letters repeatedly throughout the grid. So very good. Uh, very nice puzzle. Hope you enjoyed it. And now let's discuss a few clues from yesterday's puzzle, which I did uh, note today. So first off, any profit connects my pronunciation of garlic in Spanish. A-G-O should have been ajo. Sorry about that. I think I probably said ayo or something like that, which was wrong. So thank you for that. that should have, I should have gotten that, gotten that right. Uh, Brian Parente has looked it up, and Campbell's, the soup company, is in fact its own company, traded as CPB on the New York Stock Exchange. It claims the brands Pepperidge Farm, Pace, and Snyder's as subsidiaries. So there we go. 
uh, Campbell's not itself part of a larger conglomerate, but is itself the conglomerate. Uh, Lord Bulb finally points out there were quite a few culinary-related clues that were not directly part of the theme in the puzzle as well. I think I mentioned a couple of these, but not all of them. So roux, whip in the sense of whipping cream, knife and oven, to name a few. So thank you for pointing that out as well. All right, and that's all I saw that... that um, belongs in this section of the of the grid. Sorry, of the, of the video. So there we go. That's that for the Thursday crossword. That's that for today's video. Hope you enjoyed it. I will be back, of course, tomorrow for the Friday crossword when we dispense with this thematic silliness and just solve a straight, themeless crossword grid. Hope you uh, enjoy that. Do come back for it. Until then, please do have an excellent remainder of your Thursday. Take care. Uh-huh.